Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. To start off the series, I want to start off by saying that transgender is an adjective and not a noun. I am not transgendered. It's not an action. It's not like a past tense thing. So I am not a transgender. I am not a trans. I am a trans person. I am a transgender individual. I am trans, you know, but that is a word that describes who I am because I'm more than just my gender identity. Being transgender means that I was assigned a gender at birth that I no longer identify with. So when I was born, when the doctors looked at me and called me male, I was assigned male at birth. That was wrong, however, because I am in fact a woman. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Let's break down the queer community acronym. The L stands for lesbian, which is a woman attracted to women. G stands for gay, which is a man attracted to men. B stands for bisexual. Many people mistake the definition for bisexuality for only being attracted to two genders. But historically, the definition has always been an umbrella term that is inclusive of all people who are attracted to more than just one gender. The T stands for trans, which is someone who is assigned a gender at birth that they no longer identify with, which also is inclusive of non-binary people. The Q stands for queer or questioning, which is inclusive of all. P stands for pansexual, which is the attraction to people regardless of their gender. The I stands for intersex. Intersex people have reproductive organs that may or may not fit into the binary male and female. The A stands for asexual or aromantic, which is those that are typically not interested in engaging in sexual or romantic acts with other people. The A can also stand for agender people, which are those who do not identify with a gender. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. The word cisgender is the opposite Latin root of transgender. So what it means to be cisgender is that you are assigned a gender at birth and you still identify with that gender. Using the word cisgender woman instead of saying biological woman or real woman or born woman is a more inclusive way to talk about people that are not transgender because trans women are real women. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Let's break down dysphoria. Dysphoria is really hard to explain, and so many transgender people use the phrase born in the wrong body in order to explain to other people what it might feel like as a trans person to experience dysphoria. For many other trans people, including myself, this feels limiting and invalidating towards our bodies because my body is not wrong, my body is perfect. But dysphoria does make me feel like I have some sort of disconnect to certain areas of my body. So I made the decision in my self-love journey and out of self-love only to have gender affirming surgery and to start hormones. This is not a requirement of course of being trans but for many people changing our physical appearance can help us feel more connected to our bodies. It can also help us feel more comfortable and safe to navigate the outside world. Changing our physical appearances can also give us immense euphoria and confidence. I was not born in the wrong body. I was born in the right body. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. For a long time, I was not comfortable with being trans. I felt like being trans was wrong. I felt like I was born in the wrong body. I was not born in the wrong body. My body is perfect. This was, you know, the life that I was meant to live. I don't believe in like a higher power or like greater purpose in life, but I can create that purpose. I choose to actively fight against society. I was born in the right body. My body is perfect. I choose to accept and affirm my body. I focused a lot on body acceptance and body positivity. I've learned to love parts of my body I never thought I could. And I've learned to be neutral about parts of my body that I used to hate. And I've, you know, been on hormones for over six years now. I've had multiple surgeries to affirm my body, but none of that made me a woman. I've always been a woman. I just simply feel more comfortable in my body the way that it is now. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Accessing gender-affirming hormone therapy or surgery is a very personal decision that not every trans person wants and many trans people cannot have access to. Physically transitioning can be really expensive. Many insurances do not cover it, even if you do have insurance. There may not be an affirming medical provider in close proximity. A trans person's parents may not be supportive before they are illegal adults. 
there are so many factors that contribute into the accessibility of transitioning. Transitioning is not a one and done thing. I believe that as humans, we're always learning, growing and evolving. And so we're supposed to change. And so I don't think that there's ever like a completion to transitioning because there's no requirements to coming out and being a trans person. Remember that all transgender people are valid no matter what they look like or what they decide to do to their body. Trans people are who they say they are regardless of if they decide to transition or not. I think being trans is so much more about gender euphoria. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. When talking about coming out or transitioning or being trans, we often talk about dysphoria as like the leading cause of people wanting to transition or as like a requirement of being trans. And I don't think that's true at all. In fact, I think the opposite is true. I think being trans is so much more about gender euphoria. Gender euphoria is the feeling of, you know, overwhelming happiness, satisfaction, or connection to one's body or gender. I think it is such a beautiful thing to be able to affirm our bodies, whether that be through hormones or surgery or changing our name or our pronouns. It is truly the greatest feeling in the world to experience gender euphoria. Every person deserves to feel that way and that is truly what I believe is the root source of being trans is allowing oneself to lean into what makes them truly happy and feel affirmed. A lot of people judge me because I've had multiple plastic surgery. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. Changing one's appearance or affirming one's body is not about vanity for transgender people. A lot of people have called me vain, but what a lot of people fail to recognize is that as a transgender person, affirming my body is not about simple vanity or simply, you know, being beautiful or fitting into uh, this stereotypical mold. Having gender affirming surgery and affirming my appearance is life saving for trans people. Because for so long, I was told that I was a boy and that I had to be a boy and that I wasn't allowed to be a woman and that I would never be beautiful. When my dysphoria has been the worst, I struggled with self-harm and I struggled with suicidal thoughts. And so having affirmed my body in so many ways, I now have so much confidence in gender euphoria. Now I don't feel like I'm fighting just to live every single day. Now I feel like I can finally thrive. Medically transitioning can be extremely difficult to access. So here are some tips if you want to medically transition. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. A great first step would be to come out to someone who you think is going to be supportive. I'd also highly recommend going to a therapist who specializes in supporting transgender people and talking through all of your feelings about gender with a professional. Most often than not, in order to start medically transitioning, whether it be hormones or surgery, you have have to have a letter of recommendation from a therapist. Many doctors, especially endocrinologists who specialize in hormone therapy, will allow a transgender person to have informed consent is basically one sheet page that you can sign off saying that you understand all the benefits and all of the risks of starting hormones or having surgery rather than having to go through a therapist and get a letter of recommendation proving that you are who you say you are and that hormones or surgery are medically necessary. Medically transitioning is life saving. Sometimes we just have to prove that to our insurance companies, surgeons and doctors in order to get the care that we need. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. In order for insurance companies to cover most surgeries and often hormones as well, you have to have a letter of recommendation from a therapist that says whatever procedure you are having done is medically necessary due to the fact that you are transgender and have gender dysphoria. Many insurance companies are really strict on what procedures they will cover for transgender people, especially when it comes to plastic surgery, because they deem it cosmetic surgeries. But many insurances will accept appeals and you can file for a special claim because you are transgender. I highly recommend calling a specialist within your insurance company. That way they can answer any of your questions about coverage and submit all of your documents in order to try to get what you need done covered.
What are all of the side effects to going on gender-affirming hormone therapy? Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. I've been on estrogen and spironolactone for just over six years. In the first month, I started immediately feeling my mental health improve, my skin to soften. The next like three months, I started feeling like I was losing muscle. I didn't have as much energy, started to experience mood swings. After six months, my nipples were much larger. After about like eight months, I changed from the pill to injectable estrogen. Changes started to happen much quicker. My hairline stopped receding. My facial features started to really soften. After three to four years, I started getting more of an hourglass shape. After about five and a half years, my sex drive was decreasing. I was struggling with erectile dysfunction. I started I mean, ED medication. Some people also do experience shrinkage. I never did. You know, I'm incredibly thankful to be on hormones, but I can only ever talk about my own experience believe trans children when they tell you who they are. Rose. Rose. Oh, you're a girl? You're Queen Rose. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. I was just four years old when I named myself Rose and I started calling myself a girl. I wasn't able to come out or transition until I was 19 years old. There have been many studies and scientific research done and kids have a very solidified idea of what their gender is as young as three or four years old. Coming out as trans doesn't have to mean that someone is going to go full force, jump straight into the deep end. Coming out as trans is a process and it looks different for each individual. Transitioning for a trans child can mean simply changing one's name, pronouns, and the clothing or hairstyle that they have. Trans kids know who they are. So support trans kids and believe them when they tell you who they are. I chose the name Rose when I was just four years old. What's your name? Mine is Rose. Huh? Rose. Mine is Rose. Rose? R -O -S -E. Are you King Rose? No. Queen Rose. Oh, you're a girl? You're Queen Rose. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. I got the name Rose from the movie Titanic. I was so obsessed with Kate Winslet's character, and all I wanted to be was this beautiful, rich heiress who was free and confident and stood up for herself. And so when I came out as trans, I knew that I had to choose the name Rose. So I came up with the name Rosalind, that way I can go by Rose, Rosa, Rosie, and so many other nicknames. Our names are so important because they are everything to do with our identity. They are how people refer to us and they reflect everything that we are. Trans people deserve to be referred to as the names that best affirm them. Trans people's names, much like our pronouns, are not preferred. It is simply who we are believe and support trans youth. The reason that suicide rates and self-harm and mental health issues are so high for transgender people is because of the lack of support. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. Medically transitioning is life-saving and it looks different for each individual. Transitioning for a trans child can mean simply changing one's name, pronouns, and the clothing or hairstyle that they have. Once an individual is at around the average age of puberty, after going through therapy and getting recommendation letters and with parental consent, then they can start hormone blockers, which are 100% reversible. Hormone blockers will simply prevent puberty from happening. Trans teens can start hormone replacement therapy. There are quite a few permanent effects to starting hormones, but most of them are reversible if only started for a short period of time. Most doctors will not consent to perform surgery on trans people until they are 18 years old. I had to learn to have patience with my family when I came out to them because I had all this time to figure it out. They had just a few moments. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. I came out as transgender when I was 19 years old. And so when I came out to my family, I had to understand that I had my whole life to figure out what it means to be trans and you know that I am trans and how I wanna navigate the world. It took me a while to realize my family also had to take the time to transition, to learn and to understand. Of course, it was very disheartening heartening to hear the fears that my family had when I first came out kind of led me to believe that they weren't going to be supportive. But in time, with a lot of patience, with a lot of love, with some hard conversations, my family is now very supportive. Sometimes we just have to be patient. And unfortunately, other times our families may never come around. But our true family are those that love and support us no matter what. 
I talk a lot about really loving being trans. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. And a lot of trans people are very uncomfortable with that fact, and that's okay, because for a long time, I was not comfortable with being trans. I felt like I was born in the wrong body. I felt like I was unlovable or that I wouldn't find success, but none of that is true. I feel like I have no other choice but to love being trans because it's simply who I am and it's not anything that I can change. And so I'm thankful for, you know, all of the experiences that I have. I'm so thankful for all of the lessons that I've learned and I'm thankful for the community. Would my life be easier if I were cis gender or you know didn't come out as trans yes absolutely but i would not have been happy i would not have been able to see a future for myself i would not have been able to continue living because being trans is not a choice i am trans and i choose to love and accept that fact because i cannot change it Happy Non-Binary Awareness Week. This is a week in order to bring awareness to people who identify as non-binary. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. Non-binary people are those who do not identify in the binary construct that gender is only man or woman. So being non-binary means that your gender identity could exist somewhere in between man or woman. It could be somewhere other than man or woman. It could be both man and woman, or it could be none of the above. Many non-binary people use they them pronouns but some do not and not everyone who uses they them pronouns is non-binary most non-binary people do identify as trans because those who are trans do not identify with their gender assigned at birth being non-binary does not require that you experience gender dysphoria or that you want to change your name your pronouns or your physical appearance and each non-binary individual's journey is their own always remember that you don't need to understand something perfectly in order to be respectful Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. Non-binary identity is not new. Non-binary people are valid and real and have always existed. Many cultures today and all throughout history have respected those who do not conform to the gender binary. With more acceptance today, more representation today, and a lot more education around the queer community, more and more people are coming out as trans and non-binary. This is not because it's a trend or that there's more non-binary or trans people today, but because there's more awareness and information about it. And as people feel like they will be accepted, they're more likely to come out and be who they truly are. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. Non-binary is often shortened to the word NB, E-N-B-Y. Many non-binary people, including myself, find this shortened version of non-binary to be really cutesy and very affirming, but some non-binary people feel that the word is infantilizing, and so it's always important to ask people how they are most comfortable being identified as. Some people also shorten the word non-binary to the letters N and B, but the letters N and B put together are most often used to refer to those who are not Black. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. The non-binary flag, which is yellow, white, purple, and black, was created by Kyle Rowland in 2014. The color yellow references those who identify without and outside of the gender binary. The white stripe represents those who identify with multiple or all gender identities. The purple stripe, which is a mix of the colors blue and pink, represents those who identify between the spectrum of male or female or someone who feels a mix of both male and female. And the black stripe represents those who identify without a gender or who may identify as a gender. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. They them pronouns are grammatically correct in a singular form and have been used for centuries. Fun fact, the word you was actually used in a plural form originally. When we're referring to one individual, we often say you are and then we describe them. We don't say you is, that's not technically proper English. The singular form of the word you is thou is. Thou sounds like old English and we don't use it anymore. Language has evolved so that we use you are instead, even though it was originally in its plural form. We currently use they them pronouns in a singular form in our everyday lives as well. So if someone left behind their textbook in class, we'll say, oh no, someone left their textbook. Do you know who they are? Someone may respond, oh, I think it's them over there, but I don't know their name. I personally like to use they, them pronouns as a default when I don't know the gender of someone I'm talking about. 
Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. This is a reminder that non-binary people do not owe you androgyny. Some non-binary people look like this, some people look more androgynous. I identify as non-binary, but I like to present very feminine because that's just what feels most comfortable to me. I'm not trying to fit into anyone's box. I'm just trying to be the most confident with myself as I can be. But I also identify with my trans womanhood. I identify as non-binary because I was assigned male at birth, but that was wrong. I closely connect to womanhood, but I feel like that is limiting and doesn't fully encompass my identity. Most non-binary people, including myself, are very comfortable if you accidentally misgender us or use the wrong pronoun. So long as your intentions are pure and you try your best to correct yourself and don't make a big deal out of it. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Many non-binary people use they, them pronouns, but not all of us do. I'm non-binary and I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. I love when people use both and interchange them. That is what's most affirming for me personally. The proper way to refer to me using they, them pronouns is Rose is an educator and advocate for the trans community. They are wearing purple eyeshadow and lip gloss. They have sparkly glitter nails and they have beautiful beautiful little rhinestones on their tank top. <laughs> <laughs> when introducing myself, I like to say, hi, my name is Rosalyn. I typically go by Rose and my pronouns are she, her, or they, them. And then I'll respond by asking, how can I refer to you most respectfully? One easy thing that allies can do is introduce themselves with their pronouns and put them on their bios on all social media. Instagram recently made this easier than ever. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. As a trans feminine individual, people often try to compliment me by saying that they would have never guessed that I'm trans, or that I'm just too beautiful to be trans. And while early on in my transition, that may have felt affirming and made me feel very good, it no longer makes me feel affirmed at all. In fact, it feels very invalidating. These are backhanded compliments because it assumes that trans people are not beautiful or that trans people are supposed to look one certain way. It also assumes that the goal of coming out as trans is to transition and try to assume cis normative beauty standards. And this simply isn't true for most trans people that I know today and certainly not for myself. Being cis assuming or looking like you're not trans it shouldn't be seen as a compliment because all trans bodies are perfect. Trans people are beautiful just as they are. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Early on in my transition, I thought it would be a goal of mine to be cis-assuming and to even possibly eventually live stealth, which means that I would no longer tell people that I'm trans. But now that I feel more confident in myself and now that I have more support and partially now that I also have cis-assuming privilege, my only goal in my transition is to feel as comfortable and confident in my own skin as I can be. I don't want to look cis or have people not know that I'm trans. My goal is not to make others feel comfortable. I just so happen to like femininity. I have had multiple surgeries to affirm my body, but that's not what makes me trans and that's not what makes me a woman. That's not what makes me feminine. Our bodies are simply a vessel that carry us throughout this world that we can choose how to label and we can choose how to decorate. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Before people didn't realize that I'm transgender simply by looking at me, you know, I was more likely to be ridiculed or made fun of, discriminated against, harassed, called names, my opinion wasn't respected as much. Um, people gave me weird looks. Um, people would question me um, in the spaces that I was navigating, such as restrooms or dressing rooms. In recent years, I've noticed that a lot of people don't assume that I'm transgender anymore. This is a phenomenon called cis-assuming privilege. Um, a lot of people also call this passing or not being clocked, people do not assume that I'm transgender just by looking at me. While I recognize that this is a privilege that I have because it does allow me to navigate the world a little bit easier, there's also a large danger for the moments that I could be clocked or you know, people could find out that I'm trans. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. I certainly have a level of safety that I did not have before having cis-assuming privilege, but with that being said, there's also a large degree of unsafety 
in being, you know, cis assuming and then being found out to be trans. I hear all too often the story of especially a trans woman of color and more statistically, typically a black trans woman going out in public, going out on a date, being hit on by a man. And then when people find out that she's trans, violence ensues. In many states today, the gay and trans panic defense is still a legal defense, which means that, you know, someone was so shocked or surprised to find out that someone is trans or queer that they had no, you know, control over the violence that ensued after because they were in a state of shock. And this defense needs to be outlawed. I'm not always comfortable with being outed as trans. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. I much prefer to be the person to tell new people that I'm trans. I think it's so much more personal when I'm able to out myself as trans to people. And I also feel like I'm better able to explain what that means. For the most part, I'm okay with my family telling people that I'm trans because I trust my family to, you know, tell people that are trustworthy. And I'm very comfortable with people online outing me as trans because I'm a public figure and I talk about being trans all the time. So most people know that I'm trans. That being said, Said, if I am in an area that I know is conservative or that I know is not super trans friendly, or even sometimes if I'm in an area that I've never been to, I'm not always comfortable with being outed as trans. Outing a transgender person in public can be extremely dangerous and the trans panic defense is still legal in far too many states today. So it's best to always ask people if it's okay to out them. Sexuality and gender identity are two separate things. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. While both identities exist within the LGBTQ PIA plus community, they are not congruent with each other. So I came out as attracted to men in 2010, so I came out as gay. But now that I've come out as a transgender woman, I have since come out as bisexual because I'm attracted to hearts, not parts. Transgender people can be any sexuality depending on their own identity and what label best feels comfortable for them. And while I don't like to force labels on anybody, I feel very uncomfortable when gay men express their attractions to me because it feels invalidating to my gender identity as a woman because the people who are attracted to me are attracted to a woman. If you're a man and you're attracted to me, that is a heterosexual attraction, regardless of what my body is, regardless of what stage I am in my transition, because I am a trans woman, therefore you're attracted to a woman. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. My whole life I was taught by society and religion and, you know, the community that I was surrounded by to suppress my femininity because I was never man enough. You know, I was never masculine enough, I was never strong enough, tough enough, sporty enough, whatever. Um, because, <laughs> you know, there's just very little masculinity within this vessel. <laughs> And so when I went through puberty and I realized I was attracted to men, I thought that that was the answer to my effeminacy. I thought that explained everything. Of course it didn't, you know, five years after coming out as attracted to men, I came out as trans and accepting the femininity within myself finally and let, allowing myself to, you know, express my femininity it started to allow me to begin to be attracted to femininity in other people as well. And not only like feminine men, but also women. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. It was a real, you know, internal struggle to accept that I am attracted to women. For so long, I was a gold star gay. I was finally figuring out who I was and I wanted to be the best at it because I wanted to prove myself because I was never good enough. In my mind, I thought that certain body parts and certain features in a person were completely unattractive or scary. I think partially because I was taught to suppress my femininity and my attraction to men, you know, once I was finally allowed to do that, you know, I had no interest in anything else because I was always told was that I had to be attracted to women. Once I realized that there was no point in me denying myself the possibility of love and happiness, you know, no matter who that is with, is when I started to feel so much more confident in myself, in my identity, my attraction, and how I navigate this world. 
Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. A gold star gay is a man who has only ever had sex with cisgender men. A gold star lesbian is a, you know, cisgender woman who's only ever had sex with cisgender women. For five years of my life, I identified as a gold star gay. At that point in my life, I was only attracted to men who were assigned males at birth. After I came out as trans and started learning about my sexuality and how I'm actually, you know, attracted to hearts, not parts, is when I realized how transphobic that is because when I first came out as trans, I thought my only option was to, you know, have every surgery under the sun and become as cis-assuming as I could. And of course, you know, this was wrong because that's no longer how I feel. Your body parts do not equate to your gender. We're allowed to redefine ourselves, redefine our body parts, redefine our sexualities as we so choose and as whatever fits best. Dating while trans can definitely be a bit of a challenge. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. When I first came out as trans, I was really terrified to date. And so I didn't for like six months. I didn't know who to date. I didn't know who would still be attracted to me. And I didn't feel attractive. I didn't feel lovable. And so I ended up dating a lot of trans chasers. The first time I went on a date with a straight guy, I was terrified. While he was very attracted to me, I just felt like he was fetishizing me and objectifying me the entire time. They didn't want anyone to know that we were dating. They didn't want to be seen out in public with me. I was just their dirty little secret or I was just their experiment. I was their check off of a list. I felt like the first few men that I dated weren't actually interested in getting to know me as a person. They just were attracted to me simply for the fact that I was trans. And that made me feel really uncomfortable and dehumanized because I'm so much more than my body and I'm so much more than just trans. There's a big difference between people who are attracted to trans people and a trans chaser. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. A trans chaser is a person who objectifies and dehumanizes trans people and reduces us down to nothing more than our bodies or our trans identities. A lot of trans chasers fetishize us because they're so attracted to the type of sex that they want to have with our body type. So for example, a lot of trans chasers assume that a trans woman will top them. And a lot of trans chasers assume that trans men will bottom for them. Even though these assumptions are very false because every trans person's sexuality is just as unique as anyone else's. I prefer to date people who prefer to date trans women because they're more likely to have been with a trans woman and understand how to kind of navigate being with us. But I'm very uninterested in dating someone who only wants to date me because I am trans. There's so much more to me than just that. The first time I went on a date with a straight guy, I was terrified. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. The transition to dating straight men after dating gay men was very challenging for me. When dating straight men, they so often tried to force me into this box of being submissive or being a bottom or cooking and cleaning for them or them always paying for dinner. And while at the beginning of my transition, it, it felt very affirming for me to assume the stereotypical heteronormative role of a woman, I quickly learned that that doesn't sit right with me because I was so used to not having to assume gender roles and both kind of have more equality in the relationship in all aspects. Even dating queer men or trans men, people just see a man and a woman together and assume that we are straight and heteronormative cisgender. It feels really invalidating because my whole life, you know, I've been so visibly outwardly queer in my femininity and in all of my relationships. Modeling is one of my favorite things to do because it's so affirming. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. Growing up, I was told that I had to be a boy and that I was never masculine enough. And I was told that I was too feminine or that I needed to man up. And then after I came out as trans, I constantly heard the message that I was not beautiful or that I would never become beautiful or that no one would find me attractive. That first year after coming out as trans, so many people made fun of me and called me names and... I was still read as basically a man in a dress. And so today, some of my favorite interests are beauty and fashion and modeling, largely because it helps me reclaim my space and allows me to say, I am beautiful as I am. And the things that make me uniquely trans are beautiful. 
The words that we choose are really important because they can change whether or not someone feels respected and safe. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. I really wish that people referring to the trans community would refrain from using phrases like identifies as or goes by or preferred pronouns or preferred name or things like that because my identity is real and this is just simply who I am. My pronouns are not preferred, they are mandatory. My name is not preferred. This may be the name that I chose, but it is my real name. It's not that I identify as bisexual or identify as a woman or identify as trans. The connotation of that phrase almost suggests that I'm trying to convince you of something. I simply am these things. This is who I am. My pronouns are she, her, and they, them. My name is Rose. I am trans. My identity is real and valid. I often get called brave by random people on the internet. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. And while I really appreciate people trying to compliment me, I don't view myself as brave. I don't think simply existing as my truest, most authentic self is brave because I have no other choice but to exist. I struggled with self-harm and I struggled with suicidal thoughts for years and years before I came out as transgender. I had no other choice but to live as myself. And I understand it can be very dangerous and very challenging to be a trans person in the world. I have faced a lot of discrimination, a lot of hatred and bullying, etc. But I don't think that simply existing as myself and living my truth is brave at all. I simply exist in a society that was not made for me. I live in a society that teaches us that trans people are not worthy or valid or beautiful, but that's wrong. I am trans and I choose to love and accept that fact because I cannot change it, but I can change society. Happy Trans Awareness Week, everybody. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. From November 13th through November 20th is a week that brings awareness to the struggles that we face, as well as celebrates all of the accomplishments that we have made. The week leads up to Trans Day of Remembrance on November 20th, which is a day that honors and remembers the lives that have been lost due to violence. This week, I highly recommend watching my Trans 101 series in order for you to learn how best to be an ally, how best to understand the trans community, as well as gain insight into my personal experience as a transgender person, uplift trans creators by commenting on our videos, liking our videos, and sharing our content to your friends, your family, and on your stories. I would like to ask all of you to comment your top five favorite trans creators in the comments. By only March, this year proved to be the worst year for anti-trans legislation. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. In just 2021 alone, there have been over 144 anti-trans bills that have been introduced and debated on in the United States. Most of the bills attacking transgender people are targeting transgender minors, especially trans girls. Most of these bills are trying to prevent transgender people from playing in sports or accessing gender affirming care, such as hormones, mental health services, and surgery. Many states have unfortunately passed these bills, though luckily the large majority of them did not pass and become law. Go to the link in my bio to sign petitions and to donate to organizations in order to fight back against these bills. 14% of transgender workers have experienced unemployment. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQPIA+. According to a recent study called A Broken Bargain for Transgender Workers, which was created by the National Center for Transgender Equality, as well as many other nonprofit organizations, more than 44% of transgender workers are underemployed and not given the same access to raises or full-time work or better work. And 15% of transgender workers have an annual household income of less than $10,000. Transgender workers deserve to be judged by our work ethic as well as our contributions at work rather than one small aspect of who we are. We still have yet to pass the Equality Act nationwide in Congress that would give transgender people protections against discrimination in every facet of our lives. 
one in five transgender people have experienced homelessness in their lives. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. This is largely due to the lack of acceptance in their homes, as well as higher rates of unemployment, as well as higher rates of discrimination. According to the National Center for Transgender Equality, of the homeless transgender individuals, 60% of them are living in unsheltered spaces. One in five transgender people have been discriminated against when looking for housing. And more than one in 10 of transgender people have been evicted from their homes just because they are transgender. This is partially why we need to pass the Equality Act in Congress in order to gain national protection against discrimination for all LGBTQ PIA plus individuals. According to a fairly recent study from GLAAD, only 20% of Americans know a transgender person in their actual life. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. So the average American individual learns about the transgender community through representation in the media, in film, and in the news. Therefore, the media shapes their minds and how they treat and think about trans people. Unfortunately, the history of representation of transgender people in the media is very negative. That's what leads people to vote against our rights, and that's what leads people to become violent against us. I highly recommend watching the documentary Disclosure, produced by Laverne Cox. The doc gives a very in-depth explanation and first-hand encounters and how it affects our daily lives. It's important to take representation seriously because that's what shapes the minds of the average American individual. It has been the deadliest year on record for transgender people. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. According to a new study from the Williams Institute at UCLA School of Law, transgender people are four times more likely to be victims of a violent crime, and about half of all violent crimes against transgender people are not reported. In 2021, there have already been at least 45 recorded murders of transgender individuals, which is largely trans people of color, more specifically black trans women. Every November 20th is Trans Day of Remembrance where we honor the lives that we have lost due to violence in the transgender community. Here's a list of the known murders of transgender people in 2021. It has definitely been a very challenging year to be trans. Every time I hear my life being debated, it causes, you know, my mental health to suffer. It has been the deadliest year on record for transgender people. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. Our community is strong and resilient, and we will never back down. It's okay to take time to rest and to recuperate, to mourn, and then we can channel our grievances, our anger, our upset, our hurt, our pain, into action by fighting back, by reaching out to our representatives and urging them to kill these bills that are trying to kill transgender people. Urge your representatives to pass the Equality Act to gain national protections against discrimination for all LGBTQ PIA plus people. Go to the link in my bio to sign petitions and to donate to organizations in order to fight back. It's never trans people's job to educate you. Welcome to Trans 101, where we put the T in LGBTQ PIA+. I think it's perfectly appropriate to ask trans people how to best support them and affirm them, such as asking them for their name, pronouns, etc. But I don't think it's always okay to let our curiosity get the best of ourselves and to ask every prying question that we may have about trans people to the one trans person we know in our life. It can be exhausting to educate people. And while I really enjoy educating people and it can be very fulfilling for me, there are many times where I am too tired and I do not have the spoons. And while I may discuss very vulnerable and very difficult to talk about subjects, that doesn't mean that at any given point in any given day that I'm comfortable talking about every subject. Often when people ask me random questions, I don't answer it and instead I refer them to a video of mine or I just ask them to do a simple Google search. 